Now to Washington, where the House has approved a $14 billion military aid package for Israel, but the passage came largely along party lines. Joining us live now to discuss this topic and more is WSFA's White House correspondent, John Decker. And John, what are the prospects for the legislation in the Senate? The Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has indicated that this legislation, uh, as it moves over to the Senate, is dead on arrival. And the reason being is because it lacks two things that many Democrats want to see contained in the bill. One is funding for Ukraine. That's actually something that is uh, a, a, an issue that matters a lot to Republican senators. And the other issue is humanitarian aid for Palestinian civilians in Gaza. So now what's going to have to happen is leaders from both the House and the Senate will need to get together, figure out some sort of compromise in order to get a funding bill to President Biden's desk for his signature. And time, of course, is of the essence here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the president and first lady and their trip to Lewiston, Maine today. They're paying their respects following the mass shooting in which 15 people were killed last week. You traveled with two presidents after mass shootings. What are the goals of these kinds of visits, John? These are such difficult trips that presidents make. I traveled with President Trump after that mass shooting that happened in a synagogue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 2018. I traveled with President Obama after that mass shooting that happened at the Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina. It's such a difficult time. These families are grieving. Uh, and for them just to see the president and the first lady, regardless of political party, it means a lot. It means a lot to know that the president is thinking about them, is grieving with them, is praying with them as they go through this difficult time, you know, that's just so inexplicable to them that they've lost a loved one in this manner. So I think this kind of visit by the president and the first lady meant a lot to the people of Lewiston, Maine today. In New York City today, Eric Trump testified again in the $250 million civil fraud trial against the Trump family and their company. What's the purpose of Eric Trump's testimony and will his sister Ivanka Trump also testify at this trial? Well, well Eric Trump, like his older brother Don Jr., is a co-defendant in this case along with their father. Uh, Ivanka Trump is not uh, a party to this case at all. She's no longer a co-defendant. Uh, but for Eric Trump and Don Jr., they testified yesterday and today about their knowledge about financial statements that they signed. And those financial statements are the crux of this case. They indicate that the Trump Organization inflated the value of properties within their real estate portfolio in order to get favorable loan terms. Now, Ivanka Trump, she is set to testify. That will be next Wednesday after she lost her appeal. Uh, and so we know that's going to happen. And we also know that former President Trump will take the witness stand. That will be on Monday. So that's going to be an interesting day for the former president in the sense that his financial empire is at stake with this civil fraud trial. Uh, that's taking place in lower Manhattan. Well, speaking of former President Trump, he is still running to be president again, and these efforts to keep him off the ballot are playing out in a number of states, just this week in Colorado and Minnesota. These plaintiffs are claiming the 14th Amendment is behind them. Tell us a little bit about that argument and whether or not we expect it will be successful. Well, we're talking about Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which was an enact, enacted after the Civil War, and it would prohibit any individual who's take, taken an oath to the Constitution that's been involved in what the Constitution calls an insurrection against the United States. They would be barred from holding public office, and that's the reason for these two lawsuits that have been brought in these two separate states, and we could see more as well. Uh, I think it's premature to be talking about this kind of lawsuit. In this sense, uh, Donald Trump has not been charged with insurrection and with all of those criminal counts that he's facing, both at the state level and the federal level, he's not been convicted of anything uh, at all. And so for that reason, I think it's premature to go down this road. I don't think that these suits will be successful. And I think at the end of the day, uh, if Donald Trump is the Republican nominee, he will be on the ballot in every state 
in the country, including the District of Columbia. Our Washington News correspondent John Decker reporting just outside the White House for us this afternoon. Thanks, John.